Good morning, I'm David Holliton, uh, I'm the convener of the Committee of Officers Sunday with Spider. You might recognize me as the one who kicked you off yesterday night, and the one who will kick you off tonight, very gently, of course. Um, on behalf of the whole organization committee of the Committee of Officers Sunday, I'd like to thank you for coming. Uh, we are very glad to have you all today uh, and to make the Committee of Officers Sunday a success. Um, if we just started a Cambridge Occupation Society, uh, which you could register to, to be fed and fed and you know, about all the years that we'll be organizing in the coming term, so if you want to register to do it, I would invite you to do it. Um, but of course, you don't come to listen to me, so I'm just here to introduce Richard Fentiman, QC, who will give you the welcome address. So, thank you. Thank you. Um, and on behalf of the Faculty of Law, I would also like to welcome you to uh, Cambridge, to the Faculty, and to the uh, 2019 Cambridge Arbitration Day. This promises to be a memorable day. I refer, of course, to the Feast of International Rugby, which awaits <laughs> us this afternoon. The Six Nations hangs in the balance. I hope the organisers have warned this afternoon's speakers that if they see the members of the audience checking their phones, it is only to catch up on the latest score. I imagine that our proceedings today will be no less memorable, though possibly less violent, with less risk of concussion. Certainly, today's event, with its theme of the social aspects of international arbitration, could hardly be more timely. Arbitration is at a watershed. There is a pressing need to understand not just the rules and the practice, which we all know, but the culture, if you like, the ethnography of arbitration. I think there are several reasons for this. First of all, the very cornerstone of international commercial arbitration is being questioned. This year marks the 50th anniversary of the coming into force of the New York Convention. This has prompted much timely reflection about the vices and virtues of that game-changing instrument. At the same time, old assumptions about arbitration are being challenged by developments in the litigation market more generally. Almost as I speak, new commercial courts, streamlined, user-friendly and flexible in their procedures, are opening everywhere. They have recently opened in the last 12 months in Paris, Amsterdam, and Frankfurt. And in an especially exciting development, an entirely new hybrid model of dispute resolution is evolving in Singapore. If that were not all, it's important to note that one of the principal selling points of arbitration, ease of enforceability, is under threat. As you will know, the forthcoming diplomatic conference of the a conference on private international law has as its principal purpose the adoption of the much heralded Hague Judgments Convention. What if court judgments become as readily enforceable as arbitral awards? It may be, to use an English expression, that the Hague Conference has shot arbitration's box. And all this, of course, is given added impetus by, I have to mention the word, how could I not? Brexit, <laughs> with traditional users of the London Commercial Courts looking for other ways to resolve their disputes as the UK exits, well, possibly, the regime of the Brussels One regulation. Arbitration, of course, may be the beneficiary, but the pros and cons of arbitration and litigation are very prominently on the table. Up against this background, there is much debate about the role of arbitration about how arbitration procedures may be improved, and about the relationship between arbitration and other forms of dispute resolution. But underlying this technical conversation, there is a need to understand arbitration as a cultural phenomenon. Arbitration is a human construction. Like all institutions, its shape and scope is not preordained, but depends on the individuals who populate it. I think I can say that the need to debate these issues is evidenced by the popularity of this event. Over 300 delegates and speakers are expected today. 
We're making this by that measure the most successful Cambridge arbitration today so far. I'm sure that it will be a success by other measures too. The eminence and expertise of our speakers, of course, suggests as much, as does the extraordinary efficiency of the organizers, reflected as always in their excellent choice of caterers. <laughs> Here, I must, even at the outset, pay tribute to our sponsors who have made this possible, and to the Graduate Law Society, and to the team who organized today. And if I may single out individuals, also, of course, uh, Biden and to Damien. This brings me to the pleasant task of introducing our keynote speaker, Andrea Carnaris. In a way, of course, our speaker needs no introduction to this audience, which makes my task rather easier. But I will say that he brings to our discussion today an unrivaled knowledge and wealth of experience. As a leader within the ICC, as a distinguished author, as a practitioner, he combines practice and academia as a partner of Bonelli Garedi and a professor at Sciences Po. And he has considerable experience, as it were, on both sides of the table as both counsel and arbitrator. His expertise spans arbitration, litigation, private international law, public international law, and international civil procedure. I hope I've left nothing out. <laughs> we are invited today to reflect on arbitration as a human social construct. So reflecting the theme of this conference, Andrea has taken as his title, International Arbitration from Legal Practice to Social Community. With his protean background, there is, I'm sure, nobody better qualified to discuss this fascinating topic and set the agenda for today's conference. Please welcome Andrea 